So what exactly is negative parenting? If you don't know, don't worry. I made up the term, but not the concept. Do all this cool stuff you're seeing now with negative parenting and stick around to find out just what it is. Support our channel and get amazing deals from our affiliates using the links in the description below and grab the project file while you follow along. There's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Let's right click this area that's to the left of our timeline and do a new shape layer. Let's open that up and then we're going to add in a group and within that group, let's give it an ellipse and a stroke. I'm just going to increase the ellipse path size and maybe increase the stroke just a little bit. Let's close that up and then duplicate that group and we're going to open up group one. Click this plus button right here to add some dashes and then increase this ellipse path size a little bit and then just adjust your dashes so that you have something that looks kind of like a gear. Now the main thing is here at the very top you can see it's not exactly perfect so I'm holding down command or control and I'm scrubbing and that will allow you to do it very very slowly until you get it just perfect like that. And so now you can make your gear any way you would like. This is just a super quick gear that I'm making here. Let's press P to bring up our position. Now let's duplicate that layer. Bring up our position on the other gear and let's just offset these. And we want to position our gears so that these teeth here kind of line up. Okay, now select both layers, hit R for rotation, and this is really what the tutorial is about. Option or alt click rotation and just type time, time is 150. It just kind of gives your gear some speed. So now what I call negative parenting is this. I'm going to parent this rotation to the rotation of the first layer. Open that up and then at the very end I'm just going to type times negative one. And this is going to make it rotate in the opposite direction so that way they interlock. Maybe we can offset this a little bit better. Basically you're parenting one property to another and then at the end of the expression adding times negative one. And this can be applied in a number of situations and it allows you to automate your animation. I'm going to build just a quick little petal here. So let's add in a shape layer and then we want to give this a rectangle and a fill. Change that real quick to white. And then let's just reshape this a little bit. Give it some roundness. Now I'm going to take the position of my rectangle path, not the position of the layer itself. I'm going to move it up. Now I can rotate this and it will rotate from the center. Let's take this layer here and duplicate it. Adjust these rectangle path settings. I'm just going to make the Y value 80 and then the X value 275. And now let's just take this position and move it up. Now this one, I do want to center it. So hold down command or control and double click your pan around tool and you'll see the anchor point will pop right in the middle. Let's bring up rotation on both of these. Now make sure that you parent this bottom layer up to your first layer. We're going to put an expression on the rotation of the first layer. Option or alt click and type time times 150. And then we just want to take the rotation of the second layer, pick whip to the rotation of the first, add to the end of the expression times negative one. The pedal always stays facing the right direction as that first shape rotates around on its axis. So again, a really cool way to automate your animation. So for this example, let's right click in this area that's to the left of our timeline. We want to add in a shape layer. And then within the shape layer, we want to add in a path, which will enable your pen tool. Put a vertex anywhere over here. Hold down shift and put another vertex. The reason why I'm holding down shift is because that makes it a straight line. Add in a stroke. Let's just increase the size of this stroke so we can see it a little bit better. And holding down command, double click the pan around tool. So that way our anchor point gets centered. Go back to our contents and we want to add in a trim paths. At this point, I want to duplicate this layer because I'm going to animate the trim paths on one and link it from the other. So let's just duplicate that, P for position, and let's bring this down. So let's go back to the beginning of this layer, put a keyframe for end, and let's change that to zero. Now shift page down one, two times, increase that to 100. Shift page down one, two times again, and make this again zero. We want to select all of these keyframes and then F9 to make those bezier. Optional I'll click on end and I'm going to type in an expression loop out. And if we watch it play back, it just does this back and forth like that. I'm not going to parent the same exact value this time and simply add a negative one. Instead, I want to take the start percentage. Notice that we animated our end percentage. So I'm going to take the start percentage and then parent that to the end percentage of layer two. So it's kind of a cool little automated animation. The thing that's kind of cool about this is that you can reverse the path direction by clicking this button right here. See, it says reverse path direction on. Now they're both going the same direction, but they're going to be offset. So you can do this kind of animation if you're trying to do some kind of like visualizer 
or an equalizer, something kind of like that. Like you can duplicate this, maybe move this above this other layer, duplicate that one, and then move it below. I'm just doing this super quick and dirty, just kind of lining it up and then kind of play around with some of these settings so that way they're offset a little bit. So you can do a number of combinations with these configurations. The main thing is, is that I'm parenting the start percentage to the end percentage of the trim paths. So right click, new shape layer. And within that shape layer, I want to add in an ellipse and give that ellipse a fill. Okay, so for this example, hit P to bring up your position. We need to separate our position dimensions. So right click on position, separate dimensions, duplicate that layer. And I'm going to give this other shape a different color. It's so maybe like a blue. So I want to negative parent the X position value. Now this is the problem here. If I just take the X position of layer one to layer two, and then I open that up and I type times negative one, we'll see if I come out here that this moves our shape layer way over here off screen and that's not what i want to do but if you go to layer new null object you can take both of these layers and then parent them to the null object and then that will change your x and y position so that they have values of zero for the exposition of this second layer here let's make it negative 600 put a keyframe shift page down one two make the value 600 shift page down one two again and again we'll make this negative 600 select all these keyframes F9 to make those bezier. Optional alt click onto X position, type loop out. We can see now they are offset. This layer here is following this layer, but in a negative way. Now you can also do this with the Y position. So let's put a keyframe here for Y position and let's maybe move this down here and then shift page down one, two, three. So that way it's not exact. And maybe we'll move this one up now, something like that. Shift page down one, two, three again. And I'm just going to copy this first keyframe and paste it, select all those, and we're gonna F9 to make those easy E's. So now if we take the Y position of this first layer and parent that down to the Y position of the second, open it up, and at the end of it, type times negative one. Option all, let's click on the Y position, and again, type loop out. So we had that loop out effect, and then watch it play back, and we get this kind of a result, which is kind of cool. So by adding times negative one, whenever you parent a property of one layer to the property of another, you can automate your animations and get some really, really cool results. And so I highly encourage you to experiment with negative parenting. Again, not a technical term, something I made up when I came up with the idea for this tutorial. Nonetheless, let's make it something that everyone starts talking about, negative parenting. I want to thank Envato Elements for sponsoring this episode and also thank my viewers for making this sponsorship possible. For designers, editors, and animators, Envato Elements is an amazing resource. With your membership, you can download unlimited assets for anything you could possibly want or need for your projects. Get access to high-res stock videos and photos, as well as motion graphic templates for titles, video displays, logo animations, lower thirds, infographics, promos, openers, and so much more. You also get access to backgrounds, textures, patterns and icons, which we all know are vital resources. You get access to music for your sound beds in virtually any style or genre you can possibly imagine for designing the perfect sound for your projects. Speaking of sound design, you have access to Envato Elements' entire sound effects database, which includes any sound you could possibly need or want for anything from short film production to commercials to logo stingers. Every asset comes with commercial and non-commercial licensing at no extra cost, so both you and your clients can produce amazing projects with peace of mind. And again, with your membership, you get unlimited downloads of all of these assets from Envato Elements. Download as much as you want, as often as you want, without ever having to pay for individual projects or files. Check out Envato Elements from the link in the description below and get 70% off the first month. That means you have access to everything from Envato Elements for less than $10. It's an unbelievable deal and I highly recommend you check it out. I hope this tutorial helped you out and that you learned something new and useful. Make sure to come back next time for another tutorial that will expand your knowledge of After Effects while also teaching you some really cool tips, tricks, and shortcuts. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And click the bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Support our channel by getting your 7-Minute AE merch today at our online store. And sign up for my Udemy course, The Power of Shape Layers, is guaranteed to make you a Shape Layer Rockstar. The link to that course, to our 7-Minute AE store, and the project files for this episode are all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.